نحمده ونسلي إلى رسوله الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم This is the fourth part of a talk on how to become a great teacher In this talk we will talk about how history has shaped our thoughts in particular because we were colonized we have learned to think in certain ways which are a result of this colonization it has happened throughout history that those people who are defeated are in shock and awe of the people who defeat them so we accept without question any wisdom coming from the west so this is why iqbal has said that o farib khurd shahin jo pala kar beso mein use kya khabar ke kya hai rahur asme shahbazi that means that the eagle let the eagle child if he is raised by crows he will learn to think like crows so we have although we have been born to soar like the eagles we have been trained by the crows and that is why we cannot learn how to be a great teacher so the goal of 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 this talk is to learn how we can rise above these tides of history so there are three great historical events which have shaped our lives and thoughts these have shaped the lives and thoughts of all human beings living on this planet so at the bottom we have the crows the people who were colonized and enslaved and our mentality is that of slaves um on top of us we have the europeans who conquered the whole world and they learned to think like conquerors now instead of thinking whatever the europeans tell us we have to think about how the europeans themselves learned to think like they do and for that we have to look at the major tides one of them was the global conquest itself why did the europeans decide to conquer the globe why did the europeans reject their faith of christianity and they became secular modernized people how did the industrial revolution and the transformation to market society affect the thinking of the europeans so instead of thinking at the bottom of this we have to rise above all of this and look at all of the major events of history and how they have shaped mankind it's only after we learn to rise above the planes of history that we can understand the forces that have shaped our thoughts and our lives and then only we can be free of them so the first event is the global conquest and colonization that took place by the 20th early 20th century europeans had conquered about 85% of the globe this conquest gave them a superiority complex those who were colonized got an inferiority complex so this is one major thing this is what created the west and the east some people say there is no west and the east the world is round but actually in history the europeans conquered the world and so they are the conquerors and the rest of the world were colonized and so we are the defeated so there is a big difference in the mindsets of the two so when we come to pakistan we understand that the colonizers they were very few there only about 1000 british at the height of the in here at the height of the in the, in the governor uh, governance class so they learned with they they ruled the millions of people the population of india with the help of a class that was trained to think like them these you can call macaulay's children there was really a terrible choice that was faced by our ancestors either they could live by their principles and starve to death or they could abandon their principles and become slaves of the english and then they could have power and privilege macaulay's system of education was designed to create hatred and contempt for your own culture and religion and heritage and designed to teach admiration and awe of the west so you can uh, call this the rushdi complex rushdi wrote a book called shame in which he showed how he is ashamed of his own family and he wrote this book midnight chill and we uh, talked about how terrible a thing this creation of pakistan was and what a terrible people we are and he wrote these satanic verses about how what a terrible religion we have so everything we have is bad and inferior 
and everything the West has is superior. So those people who sell out to the West, they receive honor and prizes and they got to govern the country. The Pakistan was created by a revolution in which those people who um, uh, fought for, to create an Islamic state, a homeland for the Muslims and to allow us to live as Muslims. But the people who got power were the sellout class. These people who were already administrating India on behalf of the West and they were in complete shock and awe of the West. So they continued this Mukalli system. So today uh, the English language gives you makes you part of the elite upper ruling class and they basically the lower class, the masses, they are uh, called the vernacular class and they can't speak English. So the big different divide here is the English speaking ruling class and the non-English speaking. So what is the antidote to this poison? Basically, we have to learn why uh, the Europeans conquered the world. Was it because they were superior or was it because of the Chinggis Khan factor? It's not the first time that the Muslims have been conquered. The Mongols came and destroyed a huge portion of the Islamic civilization. So similarly, barbarians can come and overcome civilization. This is not a proof of their superiority. There are many myths that we have learned and there is an article of mine called Development Myths and Truths on the blog, which you can read. Uh, there is the Sayyid Abul Hassan Ali Nadvi's art, a book on what the world lost due to the decline of Islamic civilization. There is Jack Goody's book on theft of history, which explains how the Western civilization took discoveries from all civilizations and then claimed them for their own so that it seems like all good things come from the West. And the West is especially proud of the fact that they invented science and they created science, but actually science originated in the Islamic civilization. So there is a huge amount of learning that we need to do to undo the damage that has been done to us by the Western conquest of the globe. The second major event that we need to understand is the European transition to secular thought. What they say about this is that in Europe for the first time mankind learned to reason, to think rationally. And when they started to think, they realized that the religion was a superstition and they rejected it. And then they, after rejecting religion and after learning how to think and reason, they made tremendous progress. So this is a completely false narrative, but we need to understand what it is and how to counteract it in order to understand why Europeans think the way they do and why we think the way to do because we copy whatever the Europeans think. So the real reasons why the Europeans rejected their religion was because the church had a lot of power and they'd used it, they, they abused it. So the saying goes that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. So the church became extremely corrupt by this use of power. There was these rich popes who had very luxurious and lavish lifestyle. They used to commit sins in the open. And the religion was also one which said that you should not marry, you should not have wealth. So the religion was not one which could, which could easily be maintained. And the disparity, the contrast between what they actually did and what the religion said was so great that basically the people lost their faith in religion. In addition, there was this brutal and religious warfare between Catholics and Protestants. So basically, the people uh, became disgusted from religion in the West, from Catholic religion. And this was a particular fact of their history. So this led to four major misconceptions, which we have now uh, become common all over the world. One is that because of their conquest of the world, development just means more wealth. And that's how people who conquer the world will think. But actually, Islam teaches us that development is not about getting more wealth. It's about learning how to be a better human being. So the West discovered and says that knowledge is that which helps us become rich and powerful. And actually, Islam teaches us that knowledge is how we can become better human beings. What is excellence in conduct? Life, what is the purpose of life? Well, for them, what we are taught 
is that we uh, we want to get uh, enjoyment of this world. World. We want to get pleasure. Uh, but Islam teaches us that no human beings have a higher purpose in life. The morality that uh, colonization and conquest teaches us that for the pursuit of pleasure and for the pursuit of power, all is fair. Every there are no ethics. And uh, Islam teaches us that no jihad is part of your sacred duty. It's uh, it's done for a very high purpose, and it should be done according to very strict rules, under with responsibility to God. So the third major force which shaped European thought is called the Great Transformation. Uh, they had used to have traditional societies, and these were converted to market societies where everything is for sale. In a traditional society, you have cooperation, you have generosity, you have social responsibility. In a market society, you have competition, selfishness, individualism, and hedonism. How did this happen? Well, for reasons which are complex, the industrialization process started in England, and industrialization leads to excess production far above the needs of the society. This was uh, created some factors which led to social change. So instead of thinking about how to live in a self-sufficient way, the theory of comparative advantage was developed where you trade all your goods, all your surplus, you give your access to others, you buy from them. Instead of simple lifestyles suited to having a small amount of goods, luxury and waste, and excess consumption became uh, prized and uh, desirable. So uh, life in which we were supposed to have higher purposes, arts and athletics and uh, philosophy and spiritual pursuits, life became all about production and consumption. So these are some of the characteristics of the market. So what is the antidote to this? We have to learn the simple li lifestyles which were taught by our Prophet ﷺ and his companions. He taught us that we should not envy others and we should not do things to cause others to envy us. He taught us that power is not to impose on others, it is to protect the weak. Money is not to show off and to have luxury consumption, it is to give, to take care of the poor, those who don't have. Uh, we spend excess wealth on others, we create our calf to take care of the social responsibilities that we have. We think of all of the children in the society as my children, so their responsibilities. Everybody who is in my Siddhamat is like one body, and um, all of the needs of the Ummah are my responsibility. So there is brotherhood of all human beings, and we are responsible to take care of the education, the food, the shelter, all basic needs. And for a thousand years, the Islamic societies managed to take care of the basic needs of all members. There was no question of a child having to produce money in order to be able to buy food. Uh, feeding the children was a responsibility of everybody. Similarly, for education and health, the concept of buying your health, buying your education is a new invention of the market society. It did not exist in the Islamic society. So there is a huge amount of unlearning that we need to do and then a huge amount of relearning we need to do in order to understand what it means to be an eagle, to be free of these um, tendencies to eat dead flesh and to fly low and to look for the gross pleasures of life instead of the higher spiritual pleasures for which Allah Ta'ala has created us. سبحان الله بحمده عدد خلقه ورزا نفسه وزنت ذرشه ومتاد كلماته الحمد لله رب العالمين